This is Carla Hinton reporting for the Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. I'm here in the studio with Andre and Jessalyn Head of Oklahoma City. They are historians and they are also very passionate about genealogy. In fact, I think you have said that they come hand in hand. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yes. So they recently uh, partnered with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Oklahoma Historical Society, the Oklahoma Genealogical Society, among others, to offer the Treasure Your Roots Genealogy Conference in Oklahoma City. I attended that and it was very well uh, yes. received. I, th yes. I thought you had a big crowd. It, we, over 400. So. Yeah, we had over 400 people there. <laughs> good, good, it was good. It was really exciting and we got a, a really good number from the African American community. Oh, good. And uh, But it was a, a huge success. Everybody good. was, we're still getting phone calls. Good, yeah. Absolutely. Hey, good, yeah. good, good. Well, uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, how did genealogy become so important to you? Well, it started out right here in Oklahoma City with my grandmother. And I have a cousin, Harold Aldridge, that presented my grandmother kind of with an autobiography of the, uh, the Mincer Merritt family. Okay. So I read that and it was, I was so amazed and I actually just wanted to be a part of that and I just didn't know how to do that. And I thought, well, if I could get documentation that would help to solidify his information would be wonderful. And uh, I moved to, uh, was married and moved to Seattle in 1992. Okay. And I happened to get a call from a relative that I didn't know. And he started out with a conversation as, my name is P. Ethan Massey and I believe your great grandfather and my great grandfather were brothers. Okay. And I said, oh, amazing. So, we ended our conversation. I called him back uh, a day or two later and we started uh, conversing about the family. He introduced me to the National Archives and that really got me motivated in doing my family history. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. And how about you, Jesslyn? I know that you have, he has been the one that's really, really passionate about it and Precisely. you've also just couldn't, okay. <laughs> okay. Precisely. <laughs> okay. But my, my parents, uh, Ira D. and Ruby Hall, who also are Oklahomans, right? And um, I have uh, followed, of course, Mr. Head's lead, and he is so passionate about his family history that led then to the black towns, and right. so uh, it all kind of linked together eventually. Okay, okay, good, good, good. So, uh, why did you start the uh, Black Research Genealogy Group, and can you talk a little bit about the organization's mission? Okay. Well, we started out, uh, when I was in Seattle, I joined a genealogy group there. And I was a part of uh, a pretty nice sized group. Okay. And uh, I learned a lot from them. So when I realized that we were going to be moving back to Oklahoma City, I asked someone at the Latter-day Saints if they knew of the Latter-day Saints group in Oklahoma City if they were doing anything with gene genealogy or if there was a genealogy group. So the person that I talked to didn't know. So when we moved back, I was at, uh, we were at the uh, Church of, uh, Lutheran Church of... Um, Christ Redeemer, I think it is. Yes. Church, right. And I talked to a lady by Mrs. Waldrop. And we were just having a conversation, and then that's when I found out from her and a couple of other people that there was no African American genealogy group in Oklahoma. Okay. And I was shocked. Okay. So she said, well, if you start one, I'll be the first one to join. <laughs> and I didn't really want to do that at first because, you know, our plates were full with the black towns and, and everything else that we're doing. Right. But I went home that night, my wife talked to me about it, and she said, well, you should at least start that and then go from there. So I came back and talked to the ladies and uh, we had our first meeting. And uh, it started out for a few months just um, kind of talking about genealogy. Okay. And then a year from this past December is our first year. And we have over 35, 40 members, and okay. we're excited and we're moving forward, and that's why we were part of that uh, genealogy conference that, that was held at St. John Missionary Baptist Church. And that's 35 or 40 paying members. Paying members. But there are about 50 
who will stop in periodically okay. to find out if they're interested in joining okay. or who just want to come for a, a bit. Okay. Uh, and so I, I expect the membership to double by the okay. end of this year. Good, good. Uh, okay, okay. Now tell me again, when do you meet? We meet on the last Saturday mm -hmm. of each month okay. from 1030 to 1230 at the Oklahoma History Center. Okay, okay. Good. Thank you so much. Yes. There'll be people that will see this and think, when do they meet? Right. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about your latest project, the Black Church Project? How did that come about? Well, the Black Church Project came about, we were having our historical black towns, um, 13, honors 13. We had a banquet and Pastor Jemison from the uh, St. John Missionary Baptist Church was there. and. We, he had a conversation first with my wife and then he had a conversation with me and he had noticed that there was, uh, he was at the History Center and noticed that there was no information on black churches. Okay. So he asked me if I would be interested. He said, I've already talked to your wife. And I said, sure, you know, no problem. And um, so we got involved and he's kind of the spearhead of this, it's his vision. Okay. And we're just kind of like in the driver's seat uh, to really push it. And I think my wife can get a little bit more into that. Well, at, at the same time, we spoke with Dr. Blackburn, who is the director of the Oklahoma History Center. We talked with him about the absence of any, you know, supplemental information there, any, anything of any substance. And he agreed. He indicated that if we were really interested in pursuing this on a statewide basis, starting with the black churches in Oklahoma City first, okay. branching out to the black churches in the black towns, of course, okay. and then the larger metropolitan areas, Tulsa, Stillwater, that he would love to have an exhibit, an initial exhibit and then parts of it in a permanent display. Oh, wow. So we're really excited about that. Okay. And he's going to initiate it with a full interview of Dr. Jemison and his history with St. John, starting with Pastor Johnson and then Pastor W.K. Jackson. Okay. And then, of course, Dr. Jemison, who has been at St. John for over 30 years. Wow but 45 years in the ministry. So we're just really excited to get it started. And it launched the first Sunday in February. You were there, right? <laughs> which we appreciate. Um, but it started, and he's starting with all the newsletters, but we have talked with several ministers uh, just as kind of an initial information sharing okay. ecumenically. Okay. So, um, we are going to touch the major churches for certain that were involved in the civil rights movement, but not around civil rights, around religious um, activity. Okay. As, as it turns out for us, the black church has really been the central focus of black life for years and years. And for a long time, it was the center of social activity, of political activity, of you know, education and the church because there were no other places really where we could go. And this was you know, back in the early 1900s, of course. So we're very excited about exploring more the history, reflecting that in pictures, in interviews, in documents, in archival, kinds of uh, materials. So we're looking forward to it. It's okay. going to be a big project, but um, one that we are eager to undertake. Okay. And Good. this project not only is about the Baptist churches locally, right. it's going to be all denominations statewide. Okay. So it is a huge it's project. It's a huge project. It is a <laughs> right, huge project. Right. We're excited about it. Right. I'm really excited about it. Good, good, good. Well, okay, that leads me to my next question and my last question. So with all these projects that you all have, how do you get it all done? Well, it's just two of us. Right. And it's right. been two of us for several years now. And we realized that we just can't do it all. Okay. 
and we are looking for volunteers okay. to work with us. We're looking for researchers. Uh, with the Black Church Project, that's a huge project in itself, right. along with other projects that we have, uh, probably in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 projects. Okay. And uh, we realize that we just cannot do them by ourselves. Right. Right. And right. needing volunteers is one. Okay. Uh, needing funding is another. Okay. You okay. know, that's, yep. that's a big, uh, big product uh, that we need. We operate the Historic Black Town Tours, where we take about 55 people on each chartered, chartered bus trip, uh, and we tour three towns at a time. Okay. Our next tour, which is coming up towards the end of March, okay. we will go to Grayson, which is the home of the famous Gumbo Festival, of course. We'll go to Wall Street, which although it's not a black town, there's so much interest in it because, of course, of the race riot that was there that destroyed the black commercial community. Okay. And we'll go to Langston University. Okay. Uh, but we will do that uh, about six times this year. Okay. Uh, we need volunteers for that okay. uh, to work with us in doing the paperwork and gathering the names and collecting, the, you know. Uh, but everybody pays, <laughs> so <laughs> you know. But uh, seeking resources is is a big portion of what our needs are at this point, both um, financial resources and you know, human resources, uh, and, and we are always interested in people who are willing at this point yet to volunteer. Okay. We hope to get to the point where perhaps years from now we're able to pay people, uh, but at this point it's a volunteer effort for all of us, for Andre, for me, right. uh, for everything that we do, we have done out of the goodness of our hearts, right. because we love, we believe in the black towns. Um, and so uh, the Black Towns of Oklahoma, <coughs> excuse me, which is another big project, the historic Black Towns, mm -hmm. there are 13 of those mm -hmm. remaining. Mm -hmm. At one point, there were over 70 Black Towns. Wow. Okay. If we're not real careful, they will dwindle to two or three. The larger towns that have Langston University, of course, right. which is the historic Black College and University, Bowley, Oklahoma, uh, Grayson, but there are others, Rennesville, Summit, Vernon, Taft, Clearview, which has the African American Hall of Fame, African American Educators Hall of Fame, excuse me. Uh, so working with those towns is uh, a big part of, of what we're doing okay. and trying to help them to collaborate and partner on those projects that we can accomplish as a collective and have more success than as a town of 50 or a town of 150 or even 500. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a big part of what we do as well. Okay, okay, good, good. Well, thank you guys for coming in today. Sure. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank we you. appreciate You're it. Your wealth us. of information. Thank you. <laughs> well, always, always. If we can get it all in. <laughs> right, right. Well, this is Carla Hinton reporting for The Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. For more information, read The Oklahoman.